So most doctors ignore this blood marker, but you shouldn't. High homocysteine is linked to heart disease, dementia, brain fog. And this is something that's personally affected me. I had high homocysteine for many years without realizing because I hadn't done the testing. And the main treatment for high homocysteine is B vitamins. But even if you're taking B vitamins, your levels still may be high. In this video, I'm gonna break down exactly what homocysteine is, why it matters for your health, how to test for it, and more importantly, if it's high, how to reduce your levels and get them into the optimal range. At the end of this video, I'll give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to improve your homocysteine levels. This will help to protect your heart, reduce your risk of dementia, and just help you feel good overall. All right, so what is homocysteine? Why should you even care? Homocysteine is a natural substance your body makes when it breaks down an amino acid called methionine. And you get that from protein like meat and eggs and other protein sources. Homocysteine is a part of a process called the methylation cycle. And if you've heard of methylation before, it's kind of like your body's master switch for things like brain function, detox, energy, and even DNA repair. Homocysteine sits right in the middle of this cycle. And to keep homocysteine in check, your body needs B vitamins like B2, B6, folate and B12 to help your body recycle homocysteine properly. But if those nutrients are missing or if your body can't use them well, homocysteine starts to accumulate. And when that happens, it can damage your blood vessels, your affect your brain and throw your whole methylation system off balance. So even though it's part of a normal part of your biology, too much homocysteine is a big deal. So how do you test for homocysteine? Well, the good news is it's a simple blood test. You can ask your doctor for this test or at Planet Naturopath, we include this in any of our longevity or cardiovascular tests. And even though your doctor can do this test, more than likely they will not do it as part of a checkup. It's not part of a normal CBC, CMP, you've got to ask for it. And even then they may not do it. Often doctors do this after someone's had a heart attack, but by then it's too late. And when you get your test results, you'll usually say that somewhere between zero and 15 or five and 15 is normal. But when it comes to protecting your heart and your brain health, you really wanna be between five and eight, not too little, not too much. And the standard reference range on the lab is far too broad. So if your levels are above 10, that's a red flag and it increases your risk for heart disease, stroke, and cognitive decline. And if your levels are below four, that may or may not be a problem also. It can be potential oxidative stress or overmethylation that's leading to very low levels. Now to help you figure out why your homocysteine is high, you wanna do checks for B vitamins like B2, B6, B12, and folate. But also measure something called methylmalonic acid. That's the a measurement of the cellular levels of B12. It can be done in a blood test or an organic acids test. There's another marker that you can check in an organic acids test called Figlu, and that's measuring the cellular levels of folate. So even though the blood levels of B12 and folate might be good, you wanna make sure the cellular levels are optimal. There's also tests like the Vibrant Wellness Micronutrient Test that will measure the cellular levels as well as the blood levels of B vitamins. Even if you're taking a B complex, you might not be absorbing these B vitamins very well, or your body might not be utilizing them efficiently due to genetics. So it could be gut issues like low stomach acid, or pancreatic function, so you're not absorbing it, or there could be genetic factors like MTHFR. So if your homocysteine stays high for after taking B vitamins, you wanna do testing to find out exactly why this is happening. So as I said, you wanna check homocysteine because this can damage the lining of your blood vessels. That can lead to more inflammation, plaque, and a bigger risk of heart disease like stroke or heart attack. And it can also affect your brain, leading to memory loss, inflammation, brain fog, and even diseases like Alzheimer's. So getting tested for homocysteine when you're younger, and then you can be more proactive and take steps to prevent these problems happening when you're older. So if you're taking B vitamins and your homocysteine is still high, we need to look at other factors in why this is happening. So one of the first things I'd look at is genetics like MTHFR, which a lot of people have heard about, but there's other genes in the methylation cycle like CBS, NTRR, that make it harder to process or break down B vitamins, and that can lead to an accumulation of homocysteine. So if this methylation cycle is not working, you wanna make sure that you're getting the activated forms of B vitamins. This could be methylfolate, methylcobalamin, or for some people who can't tolerate them, there's other options. Another thing you wanna look at is kidney and liver function. Homocysteine is cleared through the kidneys and processed in your liver. So you wanna look at things like glomerular filtration rate, creatinine, 
and also the liver enzymes and make sure they're not elevated. So if the kidney function is not optimal, it doesn't matter how many B vitamins you take, you can still have higher homocysteine. Inflammation and oxidative stress can also slow down the methylation cycle. So if you're not getting enough antioxidants like glutathione, this can lead to homocysteine levels accumulating. And this is super common with stress, poor diet, or overexposure to toxins. Also other nutrient fit deficiencies can affect homocysteine. It's not just about the B vitamins. You need things like zinc, magnesium, choline. There's something called trimethylglycine that can also help to lower homocysteine. So if one of these nutrients is lacking, the system can stall and homocysteine levels can accumulate. Also things like thyroid and hormone imbalances. Low thyroid can also slow down methylation. High levels of cortisol, which is your main stress hormone, can also affect the methylation cycle. So if you're having a hard time getting your homocysteine down, these are other things to check. Also some common medications that people take like proton pump inhibitors, metformin, methotrexate. These can interfere with B vitamin absorption. And so even though you might be taking B vitamins, you may not be getting enough. And also things like smoking, alcohol, and just poor diet can have a negative effect on your homocysteine levels. So it's not just about taking a B complex and hoping for the best. Homocysteine is a much bigger picture and the good news is, is once you work out these underlying triggers that could be causing your elevated homocysteine, it's easier to get the levels in balance and stay in balance. Next up, I'm gonna walk you through a step-by-step -step plan to bring your homocysteine levels down. Step one, the first thing to do is optimize your B vitamins. First, make sure you're using the active forms, especially if you have the MTHFR gene or other genetic issues. This includes methylfolate or the folinic acid if you don't do well with methyl B vitamins, methylcobalamin or the hydroxocobalamin. You wanna get the active form of B6, which is P5P, and also riboflavin or B2 is very important for methylation. These B vitamins help to recycle homocysteine back into methionine. The next step is to support alternative pathways that you can clear homocysteine from the body. This is called the transsulfuration pathway and to support it, supplements that can help include trimethylglycine. Other factors include choline, and you can get that from eggs or liver or even supplements, zinc, magnesium. So it's more than just B vitamins to help with this pathway. You also wanna work with a practitioner to help understand the dosages that you need based on your test results. Step three is to reduce inflammation and oxidative stress, which this can affect the methylation. So factors like NAC, turmeric, finding out the underlying cause, whether it's environmental toxins, mycotoxins, heavy metals, that are leading to your high levels of oxidative stress. You also wanna make sure that you support kidney and liver function. So if you have elevated glomerular filtration rate or high creatinine, or if the liver's not working optimally, you wanna take nutrients to help support those pathways. And finally, you wanna make sure that your hormones are in balance. Check thyroid, not just TSH, but also free T4, free T3. Do a hormone test for cortisol not just the blood test, but measuring cortisol levels throughout the day. So if they're out of balance, you wanna work with your practitioner to get the levels down. So this might sound like a lot, but you don't have to do everything. The first thing is take the B vitamins. A Couple of months later, check homocysteine levels. If they're still elevated, then you work your way through the different steps, checking the homocysteine to find out what works for you. This is much easier if you're working with your practitioner because they can help guide you much better. So the big takeaway is that high homocysteine is not something to ignore. It's a warning sign that something is out of balance and that can affect your heart, brain, and overall health. But the good news is, is that you can fix it. And it's not just about taking B vitamins, but about looking at the overall health, genetics, inflammation, nutrition, lifestyle. So finding the root cause and following a plan that will work for you. If you've been dealing with high homocysteine, let me know in the comments below what's worked for you. And if you're interested in uh, a more detailed video about all the different cardiovascular tests you should do, watch this video next.